Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. You will have to just bear with me a second. What an opening that is. My Wi-Fi is dropped uh, big time, so it'll all be muffled. We should probably start that again. Just bear with me one second. People will be all over the internet, the Wi-Fi, etc. Uh, so just bear with us one sec. Uh, please um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in. Uh, thank you for waiting patiently. Um, I can see the picture myself. It's not the best. Um, I'm just going to ask to... <laughs> what an opening. Ever the professional. Ever the professional on the Just Joe football show. Um, we've got loads to get through. Um, it's been a quiet few days uh, from, from my end. Obviously, we did the watch along yesterday, so maybe not too quiet, to be honest. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll endeavour to update you and give you my opinion on the latest transfer rumours and conversations uh, that we need to to have about uh, the situation at Leeds United currently. Um, I have put a poll out about Jack Harrison. Um, please give me your opinion on it, or at least tell me what you feel is an acceptable amount for Jack Harrison to to move on, as it were. Um, what I mean by that, I'm not actively trying to sell Jack Harrison. Let me categorically say that I do not want Jack Harrison to leave. I think it would be crazy for Leeds United to even consider moving him on. But every player has his price. Uh, we're going to talk about Jack Harrison and how much Newcastle view Jack Harrison at, um, because we're hearing they view him, uh, uh, value him at around about 20 million, which I think is crazy talk, which I think is genuinely crazy talk. And I've asked, you know... You guys, because I, I think it's a it's a decent conversation to have, right? Like, at what point do Leeds United accept a bid from Newcastle? You know, we know they have a lot of money. Um, they're not willing to pay, you know, the likes of Jarby uh, at Leverkus, and I think it is like 60 million. Jack Harrison is a lot more affordable option for them. Um, so, so I just wanted to to get the general consensus from Leeds fans. At what point do the club receive a bid and say, "Do you know what? This is too much for us to turn down. This is too much for us to turn down." You know, um, that's that's my uh, question to use, and we will we will discuss it in a little bit more detail very very shortly. Um, I am just going to, uh, oh no, the Wi-Fi looks like it might be sorting itself out now. It's dropped again. My apologies. I'm really, really sorry. I have a good mind to cancel the stream and reset it back up. Um, but if we're, if we're, if we're, we're working as we're through, we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be all right. I should have sorted it all before I came Like It looks like it's sorted now from my end, okay? Again, sincere apologies. Now then, people, <laughs> welcome back to the Just Your Football Show, of course. Um, like I say, we'll start, first of all, with what we know has definitely happened. Rafinha has today officially gone to Barcelona. I said to you last week uh, when I did the video um, that it was done. Um, everything was agreed verbally. Uh, it looked like that was going to be sorted. I'm just having a look when we actually put that video out. Um, that was done on the 11th. Uh, we're now on the, is it the 15th? Is it the 15th today? Let, let me just, yeah, it's the 15th. So four days since we said that it was done. Of course, now it's official. Uh, we know we hear about them being done before it's official. So um, let's just see what Leeds United have had to actually say about Rafinha. We've all done it. I don't want to spend too long on it. Um, but Let's have a look what they've said. We'd like to place on record our sincere gratitude to Rafinha for his effort and contribution whilst at the football club. He showed questionable, unquestionable, sorry, commitment and professionalism until the very end of his time at Ellen Road. And his celebrations at the Brentford Community Stadium will live long in the memory, which I, I, I'm sure they will. Everyone at Leeds United would like to wish Rafinha the very best for the future and hope he enjoys great success at the new camp and throughout his career. And I think we all echo that sentiment. It's quite interesting that Leeds United have actually put a stipulation in the deal. I don't know if people are aware of this. I've seen a few people mention it uh, in the comments. Um, but there is a stipulation in there that states if they don't pay the upfront fee um, by uh, a certain date, then they will incur a fifty million pounds sort of fine. I think it is. Um, so there'll be an agreed date from Leeds United when they're expecting the money to come in up front. If Barcelona don't pay that amount by that set date, we don't know what that date is. 
they will have to, um, I think they'll receive uh, a, an extra amount they'd have to pay on top. It might not be 50 million. Maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe that's the actual 50 million they've got to pay Leeds United by a certain date. But there is significant um, fines, if you like, on top of that, if they do not hit the, um, you know, the, the money doesn't hit the bank account at the specific uh, time that it's supposed to. Um, but look, yeah, officially now Rafinha has gone, right? Rafinha has gone. How are we all feeling about that? I think we're all okay with it, aren't we? I think a lot of us are glad to see the back of the saga. Not so much the back of Rafinha, but the back of the saga for sure. Um, Leeds United now obviously need to start uh, making moves on their preferred uh, striker. Um, we know that that's the next player to come through the door. We hope and pray that they do get a left back. But we know the 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 thing is that's most important or highest on the agenda for Leeds United is, of course, the striker. Now, for me, there are two options that Leeds United want. The first one being Charles de Ketteler. I love Leeds just asked about that. We have got some news on Charles de Ketteler. And, of course, Callum Mwendo. There's talk of a bid gone in for Callum Mwendo. So we'll discuss them two options. They seem to be the two at the top of the list for Leeds United. Of course, like the Rafinha saga, the CDK uh, saga is very, very similar. Um, we know that he prefers AC Milan. Um, I'm okay with that. I understand it. It's Milan, for God's sake. You know what I mean? Um, they've just won the Scudetto. It's Italy, etc., etc. right? If Leeds United maybe had finished ninth again or somewhere similar last season, maybe we'd be a more attractive prospect to him. But... Um, he favours AC Milan currently. Now, we know that Leeds United submitted a bid about 10 days ago. We know that that bid's there, that verbal bid, if you like, yeah? We heard about the Rafinha being accepted over the phone. You could argue that, you know, Club Bruges have accepted our bid, our verbal bid. Um, I believe it's like 35 million with add-ons rising up to, say, potentially 37 million, and that's in euros. Um, they're happy to do the deal, Club Bruges are, of course. Um, but... The Ketelaer is giving priority to AC Milan. Of course he is. And Milan are in talks with Club Bruges and have been. Now, officially right now, as we speak, there is no agreement between AC Milan for Charles de Ketelaer, between AC Milan and Club Bruges. Now, it's quite interesting that, that Charles de Ketelaer was um, excused from pre-season training. That's now changed. Um, I think Club Bruges play in the Super Cup very, very soon. Let me just check when that date is. Um, they play, it possibly could be Utrecht. Utrecht. Um, let me just have a look at their fixtures, just to clarify. But I know they play soon uh, against Utrecht. Um, let's have a look. That'll be the league. Uh, club fixtures, ESPN, or maybe it's Genk. Uh, let's have a look. 24th of July. All competitions. Is it... Uh, is it the 24th? They have a game anyway. They have a game coming up. I'm trying to fact check myself here as we go live. I mean, their league kicks off on the 24th of July, which isn't too far. But they have a game, right, against Utrecht. Um, yeah, they're Dutch. I swear, I've seen this. Let me go back. Let me go back. I did have it bookmarked. Let me just uh, let me just go back and find that brother. Just bear with me one second because I've got so many notifications. Uh, let me just tell you where that was. Just bear with me one second. Sorry about this, folks. I normally do make notes. I have made notes. I have forgot to note the actual team that they were doing. Uh, they were playing. Sorry, just one second. It looks like I'm lying now, doesn't it? Um, where is he? Where's my Belgian guy? See, I've got specific, <laughs> I've got specific um, sources for specific countries, etc. <laughs> Trying to keep that right. Here he is. I found him. Right. Okay. Alexander Brachman. Um, right. Okay. So on on Sunday they play in the Super Cup. Right. Uh, just Google Club Bruges. I did, but nothing came up. They do play again, but no, they play on Sunday. This Sunday in the Super Cup. Right. And De Ketele is going to be involved in that game. Yeah. Uh, let me find out who that game is against, man. I know for a fact, I, I've seen it, man. It's going to do my head in that. I swear it said Utrecht, but it can't be. Like someone said, it's Dutch, right? Okay, here it is. Um, no, it's the first tweet. Um, 
Jaquette will be present on Sunday in the Super Cup. Have I just made you trekked up? I might have made that up. <laughs> right, okay. Here's the story. Here's the actual story. Let me convert it into English. Just bear with us one sec. I'm really sorry about this. I'm normally so much more prepared. Um, no, it's Ghent. It's Ghent. It's not Utrecht. Why have I said that? So, um, the, on Sunday, right, okay, let's go back. Right, here we go. Russ Vernon. I'm really, really sorry about this, right? There we go, yeah? On Sunday, Club Bruges will play again, right? And that's in the Belgian Super Cup, yeah? Now, Charles de Ketelet previously had been excused from training. That's now not the case, and he's going to be playing in that game. It's going to be interesting for us as a viewing participant, whether or not he, he features in that game, right? He's, be, he's had to go back to training. Um, you know, there's pictures of him aboard in the team bus. I don't know if that's an old picture or whatever. Um, but it's been confirmed that he, De Ketelaire, is expected to take part in the match. Having previously uh, been, uh, there you go, they beat Utrecht in pre-season. That's where the confusion comes. That's where the confusion comes. My apologies. I wasn't lying to you, Giancarlo. I just... Listen, it's been a mad day. I've been up early. I've had the kids on my own. We've been to the fun shack. We've been to McDonald's. I've just not long walked through the door. The dogs, basically, I got like a small U rhino for the little man because he's potty training and the dog start, decided to bite it. It's like a little frog that you hang on the wall. So it's like a U rhino. The dog start, decided whilst we were out to bite it. So it's got holes in, which I weren't aware of. So before I came live, my son needed to use the U Rhino, and I got piss all over me feet and all ice. And I'm wearing sliders without socks, so I also got piss all over my feet. Okay, that's why I'm a little bit flustered. That's why I'm a little bit underprepared. It's dad life, right? It's dad life. Um, so there, <laughs> there you go. There's a little look into how my morning's been. It's been good, but then obviously I got piss all over my feet. Um, and I've had to throw out the frog you rhino, and I'm now going to have to buy a new one. Um, so that gives you why I'm a little bit flustered, right? Uh, and then when I came on and my Wi-Fi was, you know, all over the shop, yeah. Okay? Shall we start again? <laughs> oh, man, no. And now I've muted me <laughs> because... The wires, right, no, don't enter standby mode. Don't do this to me. Oh, Right, tell me you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> Wi-Fi's gone. Ah! <laughs> right, okay, we're we back. Can you hear me? The Wi-Fi's gone, isn't it? Um... Yes, okay, we're back, we're back. I think the Wi-Fi's bad, it will come back, right, okay? The dog's probably smashed the uh, uh, smashed the Wi-Fi as well. Basically, I've got... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I'm flustered, man, I'm flustered. My apologies. So, as I was gesticulating there, because I speak with my hands, I've then knocked the wire out of the laptop, which means my extra screen's gone off, and I've also got the Wi-Fi connected so it looks like um, the Wi-Fi went off for a second as well. But we're back. Yeah, we're back. Okay. <laughs> so I say you're pixelated. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the half of it. Right, let's start again. Okay. Rafinha's gone. Leeds United have put up uh, a clause in there that says if they don't pay up the 50 million by a set date, yeah, they have to pay us some extra money. Yeah, Mason says, put that dog up for adoption. I know he's naughty, man. He's naughty. So, CDK wants AC Milan. Um, Leeds United wants CDK. Leeds United have put in the um, they've put in the money, but he um, he prefers AC Milan. I'm, I'm laughing at these comments. Um, the interesting point is, on Sunday, I don't know if you know, but there's a Super Cup game in Belgium. Right, it's not Utrecht. They're Dutch. Why would they be playing Utrecht in a in a in a uh, Belgium Super Cup? Um, why would they do that? I don't know. Um, it's as if someone. Why would you make that up? No, they played Utrecht in preseason. CDK was excused from that. Yeah, 
<laughs> someone's put who is Utrecht playing again. So they, he's been excused for them preseason games. However, they now play the Super Cup and CDK is expected to play. So we'll keep eyes on that uh, to see how that develops because what that shows me is that AC Milan are nowhere close to getting him done. If they were close to getting him done, he wouldn't be playing in that game, right? He wouldn't be playing in that game. Um, they've had a second bid rejected for Charles de Ketelé, so they're nowhere close, right? Now, apparently, AC Milan are set to return with a fixed fee of €30 million, Euros, right? But again, that's not what Utrecht... Uh, will it, uh, Utrecht, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop putting Utrecht in the chat. <laughs> so... This is what you come for, though, isn't it? It's all good. <laughs> Utrecht. <laughs> My days, man. <laughs> Who even are Utrecht? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I love that from Ben Turner. Utrecht. Son of Utrecht. If you watch Last Kingdom, you'll get that, right? You'll get that. Utrecht. I am Utrecht of Bebenburg. What a programme that is. By the way, I watched a film last night called Prisoners with Hugh Jackman, Cuba Gooding Jr. And I think it's, um, what's my man's name? Jake Gyllenhaal. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. If you've not watched Prisoners, watch it. I found a thread on Twitter that said 10 movies that will blow your mind. And right at the top of that list was Shutter Island. Again, one of my favourite films. One of my favourite films, Shutter Island. It is unreal. Yeah. Then underneath that was Prisoners. So I said, oh, I'm going to give Prisoners a run because I love them sort of films, you know what I mean? What a film. So anyone that's watching this who hasn't seen Last Kingdom, make sure you watch that. I've not watched the new season yet. Um, and uh, watch Prisoners. Watch Prisoners. Someone said, how about we stop this disaster? Nah, man, it is what it is. This is me, right? This is what you get with me sometimes. So let's get back to CDK. <laughs> Someone says one of the best streams you've ever done, Joe. Um, yeah, well, there you go. Um, so, yeah, AC Milan are set to return with a fixed fee of 30 million euros for CDK. They won't go as far as 35 million euros. Do you know what I just remembered as well, just in all that madness? I missed the super chat from my good friend, Holy Ghost. It's just come in my mind there. There was a super chat. Big shout out, Mark, as well, Mike Curzons, who's uh, give us the uh, super sticker. Thank you for that. Uh, let me just go find that super chat now that came in from my good friend, Holy Ghost. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. He said, uh, peace to the God, just your big up. He says, yo, we need more than just a forward. We need a left back keeper and another midfielder. I can, let's do this. Big up, Joe. Big up to you as well. I don't think we'll do that much as much as we need it. Um, we, we, I don't think we'll do that much. Here's Carlos as well with the Super Chat. What a legend. He said, afternoon, buddy. Jack Harrison has two years left on his contract. Uh, depends on what signals he's getting from Leeds. Value goes down between now and then. Personally, offering better a contract. Uh, it wasn't CBJ. What do you mean, CBJ? It wasn't CBJ. Tell me what that means, um, the CBJ bit. Um, in terms of the Jack Harrison one, we will discuss that. It's a very, very interesting point. The reason I've asked... Um, CGJG, not CBG. I, I, I don't know what that means though. CGJ, not CBJ. CGJ, Cuba Gooden Jr. It, it wasn't Cuba Gooden Jr. Who, who is it then? What's my man's name? No, it's not Cuba Gooden Jr., is it? What's the actor called? Oh man, it's not Cuba Gooden Jr. Who is it? What's the actor called in Prisoners? It's not Cuba Gooding Jr. I can see him in loads of films as well. Who Who was it? Someone answer that. I'm going to have to get it up here now, Prisoners, because that's going to do my head in. Prisoners, Prisoners. Terence Howard. Terence Howard. There you go, right? There's too many... Do you know what's happened? There's too many acronyms now. We've had CDK, KDV, DV... D, Donny van der Beek, is it? And now um, C, Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, I'll stop saying it. I'll stop saying it and I'll, 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 I'll get back to what I was supposed to do. Basically, CDK loves AC Milan and hates Leeds United. There you go. Rounded off. Let's move on. No. Um, 
apparently, yeah, they won't go as far as the 35 million euro fee, right? Uh, and they're certainly not willing to match what Leeds United have put down on the on the table, um, which is 37 million euros. I've, oh, Gavin, what a legend. R V D. <laughs> Brilliant, man. I forgot about that. K KJB. No. No, it's the K KGB. KGB. Yeah, that's Russians, isn't it? BBC. KFC. KP. TDK cassettes. ABC. R V D. Right, let's go back. So no one is willing to um or AC Milan are unwilling to match Leeds United's bid of 37 million euros, right? Um, so it'll be HB. Uh, uh, uh. I know I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I got the looks. The drive, the girls wild. I got the moves that really move them. I got chills up and down my spine. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. There you go, right? Uh, that's it now. I, I, I'm I, a fan of wrestling. I can't lie. Um, there you go. <laughs> and uh, and HBK is an absolute don, by the way. He's an absolute don. Um, woo! That's Ric Flair, by the way. Christopher says, are you sure you're okay, Joe? Possibly not, right? Possibly not. Um, I've had too many monsters, perhaps. I'm also going to be live at eight o'clock as well. Maybe I should knock that on and go um, um, go and uh, go lay down, potentially. Um, James says, what a shambles this stream has turned into. I love it. I know, right? <laughs> My God. Uh, there you go. Best stream. Oh, well, there you go. Fan of mushrooms. Um, yeah, CM Punk, what a legend. Yeah, Joe's got a Friday vibe for sure. Put down the monster. Mm. I don't, I don't, well, I do, I do smoke. Um, not weed, though. I smoke cigarettes, unfortunately. I did stop and I restarted again. Not good, anyway. <laughs> yeah, LSD, Patrick, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, everyone smash the like anyway. Everyone smash the like, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course hit that notification bell. You folks who watch me regularly uh, regularly will be like, yeah, this is standard procedure from time to time. Others that are new will be like, what is this thing going on? This was supposed to be a transfer stream. I'm really, really sorry. Um, right, okay. So, AC Milan, let's get back to it, yeah? They're going to give 30 million euros, right? They won't go as far as 30, 35 million. Um, and will certainly not match the 37 million euros that's believed to have been offered by Leeds United. Instead, they are relying on the player's ambition to sign for them. And we know nine times out of ten, that works, right? That works because we've seen it with Calvin. We've seen it with Rafinha. We've been, I guess, um, you know, the... Um, I don't know what the word is now. I know I'm smoking again, Harmony. I know it's black. Um, but yeah, look, Mil Milan retains great confidence and he's convinced that they can still close the deal and discussions will resume next week. Yeah. Um, so that one's still, for me, Leeds United are still waiting in the wings. I want to ask you the question. Do you think Leeds United should just move on? Like, just leave it a go? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Should we just leave it, move on? Because obviously the next option that we have is is Cali Mwendo. We know that Leeds United want a striker. Yeah, we know that they want a striker. That's next on the agenda. Um, and they're happy to match what Club Bruges want for CDK. But it looks like he favours that move to Milan. And what we don't want to do is wait it out. I agree with what, what Louis uh, Sandoval said there, by the way where he says no one available is better than CDK. That's why Leeds United are still waiting. There's a lot of Leeds fans that are saying, he don't want to come move on. I don't want him if he don't want to play to us and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure I agree with that because for me, if AC Milan don't stump up the cash and we've seen it with Sven Botman, 
They wanted Botman. He ended up at Newcastle because Milan couldn't pay for him. So if we get to a situation where they they literally can't can't pay for him, then then we may um, we may have to um, or he may have to move to Leeds United. <laughs> My son's just ran in the room. <laughs> My son has just ran in the room. There you go. Um, <laughs> so let's move on to the next target then, of course, who is uh, Cali Mwendo. Leeds are firm admirers of the PSG forward Arnand Cali Mwendo. Um, a new forward tops the agenda for Leeds United. And Cali Mwendo is... Uh, <laughs> The next on that list. Mark says his son's just found out the dump frog. Yeah, he's probably opened the bin and been like, what's going on? Uh, Tim says, can it get any worse? Exactly. The only way this could get worse is if, like, it just, like, pulled it out. <laughs> Lee Baird said, my wife's shouting, what are you watching? <laughs> oh, God. Um, I'm sorry, folks. These things happen from time to time. Um, yeah, it'll be all right on the night, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Cali Mwendo. So, ongoing negotiations between PSG and Leeds for the transfer of Cali Mwendo. Uh, it's believed um, it's up to 25 million euros, I believe, with uh, bonuses. So, that includes the, the bonuses, I think, 21, 22 plus three on top of that. Um, the interesting thing with Cali Mwendo is we could end up with a similar sort of situation that we find ourselves in with CDK. And what I mean by that is Inter Milan are interested in Cali Mwendo and he wants Inter Milan, or at least he's holding out for Inter Milan. So we might find a situation where we're able to buy both CDK and Cali Mwendo and neither of them want to come to Leeds United. Do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting um, to see what actually happens. Um, I actually use the question now in the chat, like, who do you think will happen? Gavin thinks we'll get both. I'm not sure we will. I think we'll only get one. I'd take both, though, for sure. Um, I think if I was to, if I was a betting man, I think the most likely one we're, we're probably going to get is going to be uh, Cali Mwendo for me. I think he's, he's the more likely at this point, just because... Um, you know, it looks like CDK is dead set on AC Milan. And look, on one side, we've seen with Rafinha, he wanted Barcelona and that's all, all he got. And that's all we got. And we had to, ac you know, accept it. But on the other side, I think about Sven Botman. And AC Milan wanted Sven Botman since Newcastle wanted him back in January. They couldn't get the deal done then. They couldn't get it done now. And who does he play for? He plays for Newcastle. So that's something worth thinking about. You know, I don't, it's not over until he's there in that AC Milan shirt. It's going to be interesting on Sunday to see if CDK plays. I guess, could we read too much into it? Potentially not because Club Bruges might not want to play him anyway, because even if AC Milan can't pay, then they're not going to want him to get injured because they know they can get a club record fee from Leeds United because we're saying on the phone, the money's ready. We're ready to pay. We're ready to pay. Do you know what I mean? But I think for me at the moment, if I was to put my money anywhere, it would be Cali Mwendo. It would be Cali Mwendo. And I'd take him 100%. You know, I would take him. Let's now talk. Uh, we'll stay with Newcastle. I want to talk to you about Jack Harrison. Um. I asked you, Paul, of what you feel he's, he would worth. Like, again, let me just say, like I said at the top of the stream, I'm not advocating the sale of Jack Harrison. I think it would be too much for Leeds United to lose Calvin, Rafinha and Jack Harrison in the same window. So not forget Jack Harrison, I think, is underrated by Leeds fans. I'm not saying that to you. I'm also saying it to myself. I underrate him as well. Um... Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Michael Whiteley, I love that comment. Um, I, I I think we do um, we do undervalue him as a fan base. Um, he was our second top scorer last season. He scored a hat-trick in the Premier League as well, which is no mean feat. It's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, Newcastle's preferred option is Moussa Diaby, previously at PSG, I think now at Leverkusen off the top of my head. Um, but they want £60 million for him. They're still playing in the Champions League. Uh, they don't need to sell. I don't think they will. Um, if you remember when we were after Aronson, for example, and the club said, you know, we're not selling him, we're in the Champions League, it looks like it'll be something similar from 
the German club. Um, and they, but if if Newcastle do want him, they have to pay sixty. Newcastle are saying that's too pricey. And what I have said about Newcastle so far, they've been doing great business in terms of how they've been, you know, the bids they've been putting in, for example. Um, they've not been, I guess, held to ransom like we've seen with previous clubs. You could argue when Chelsea got all their money, as soon as Chelsea came bid, it, it, it went up a level. Um, and you could you could also argue it was the same with City, you know, the, the value went up with Newcastle. They've been a lot more savvy with it, in my opinion, and therefore they're not willing um, to, to you know, pay upwards of 50, 60 million for a Diaby. However, a lot of reports are coming out and it's happened now for a couple of weeks. I remember doing the video, if I just have a look, when was it we first did the Harrison to Newcastle chat? It was a long time ago, nearly uh, close to when the season ended. That's how long it was. Let me just have a look. Uh, when I actually put that video out. Like, it was before the Rasmus one. It was before uh, we even did a Rasmus video. So it was on the it was on May 25th, May the 25th. Um, and we, we ended the season on the 22nd. So three days after the season had ended, there was talk about Jack Harrison to Newcastle. Um, if I look at that video now, everyone laughed at it. Everyone laughed at it, but it's still happening now. It's still, we're still talking now. Um, I remember putting it out and people going, why are bullshit? Rah, 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 rah. But the fact was, we're now on the, what, 15th of uh, July and it's still being reported. So it's clear for me that Newcastle do hold him in high regard. They do hold him in high regard. Apparently, Eddie Howe is a massive fan of him, loves his attitude and his work ethic. We know Jack Harrison's got work, great work ethic. He never, I, for me, he never seems to have time off. He's always working on himself, training hard, um, you know, even in the off, off season, um, even in pre-season or prior to that, when he's on holiday, he's always smashing it. So the fact that that story came out like three days after the season ended and we're still talking about it now shows that there's legs in it because now it's been reported by the Daily, uh, by the Daily Mail, etc. Loads of, um, you know, decent journalists are saying it. Um, so apparently... They like Jack Harrison, have done for a while, yeah? Now, apparently they're willing to offer around 20 million, which Leeds United have said that falls well short of our, of our valuation. But what do you value it at? Like I spoke to Connor earlier, um, we were with voice note quite regularly, and I sent him that voice note and, and asked him the question, because it's like, at what stage does it become too much money for Leeds to turn down? Because every player has his price. I agree with Toby. If they think he's worth 20 million, they can get in the bin. Because he's not. He's worth more than that. He's got 11 goals in the Premier League. Or 10, whatever it was. He's worth more than 20 million. But Leeds United only paid for him, what, 11 million for him? So again, you're still making an upwards price. I, I understand why they want Harrison. Because you've got someone there who's got a number of assists. And... Um, uh, and goals, the position that he would take would be Almiron. Now, Almiron, I think, got one assist and zero goals last season. He's terrible. Almiron's terrible in terms of his numbers, his output. Now, they're obviously looking for, you know, a Wilson, uh, Alan St. Maximan, and then someone on the right, someone on the right for them or, or, or on the left, whichever way you look at it. But they know that Jack Harrison can do that. And he's within their, their ballpark in terms of price. They're not willing to do Moussa Diaby at 60 million. They think he's too pricey. But at what stage do Leeds United get a bid that they go, do you know what? We need to have a conversation. Because it will happen. See, people say it's not uh, about the money, but that's why I want to have the conversation because it's like, I think they'll already be look at scouring the market for potential replacements. I'm not saying they're actively trying to, to sell. But it's like on, on footy manager. It's like, I know people might laugh at this, but on footy manager, when you speak to your, when you have your monthly meeting and they say such and such clubs or there's interest in this player, so we should scout just in case. Do, do you know what I mean? I think if they know they're interested in Jack, they've obviously had a conversation because they know about the valuation being too much for them at this present time. And all I'm, I'm, I'm asking news, I guess, because I don't know myself at what stage Leeds United go, that bid's too much to turn down. Of course, if it's 50-60, that bit, you would accept it. But they're not going to get that. 
they're not going to get 50, 60. 20 million, nowhere near, but 30 million? Because that's what I voted for in the poll. 30 million? If Newcastle put 30 million on the table, what would Leeds United do? What do you think they would do? I think it's worth it's something to consider for me. And I said that to Connor, you know, when they had the voice note. I'm, 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 I'm not worried, but at what stage do Leeds United go? We, we need to have a conversation here because they're putting in money. Is Jack irreplaceable? No. In another window, would you accept that? You probably would. But because we've lost Rafinha and Calvin, I think it's too big of a risk, personally. But if there's genuine interest, and there seems to be, because as I say, we've been speaking about this for a month, at what stage do Leeds United say it's too much to turn down? It's quite interesting, like 7% have gone 20 million, like that's not, but the general consensus is 30 to 35. So 35% of people have said 30, 32% have said 35. I don't know, like I think 30 it could be 25 million with add-ons, perhaps. But who do we go out there and get? Do we go out and get Cody Gakpo? Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just saying it's... I do not want him to go, but I think every player has his price. Um, and I, and this is what I'm saying. Like You could argue if, if, if Newcastle haven't resolved this, this winger issue or someone to play on the right and they're looking at Almiron, you know... It could get to the the end of the window and they put in a, an offer that's too big for Leeds United to turn down because you've got to remember where we are as a football club. You bring players in, you sell them on for bigger fees and you would make a profit um, on, on Jack Harrison. You know what I mean? So I think it it it's interesting to see um, and it'll be one that'll rumble on, I think. I think if we got 40 million like Cal Murder, I think they would accept that for sure. But I don't think Newcastle are willing to go up to that um, because, like I say, they think 20 is too much. If they think 20 is too much, it's, it's silly, isn't it? Because it's it, 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 that's nothing. That's nothing for Jack Harrison. It's nothing for Jack Harrison. And this also throws into the, the, the question about his position as well. Um you know, because there's a lot of talk of him being on on uh, a left wing back, for example, and think he could do a job there. I said that. But does Jack want to play there? You know, does Jack want to play there? Would he rather play, you know, higher up the pitch on the wide of a three? People might laugh at this, but let's not forget that first season there was talk of Jack Harrison for England. Little rumblings. There was even talk of Luke Kaling for a short time. So what I'm saying, if Jack Harrison has you know, hopes of eventually getting into the England setup, and he could, you know, you never know. People will laugh, maybe, but I don't think you should. It's a worthwhile conversation to have. Does he look at Newcastle and think, they're a club on the up, they've got loads of money, they're going to get better, they'll continue to progress, they're going to play me in my preferred position. That's what I mean. So Leeds United are in a bit of a conundrum or a quandrum because... They'll need to offer him a new deal. They'll need to offer him a new deal and make a decision. Do you know what I mean? It's quite interesting. I I, I honestly don't know. That's the thing. Like with with CDK, this I just my it's a it's a bit like the one Matt thing. I just didn't know. I didn't know, and and that's why I like to have a chat to sort of like talk it out out loud and to get your folks' opinions on it. Um. We are a club on the up, Gail, on, on, uh, but, but slowly. And you would imagine Newcastle will pro progress quicker than us. And that's another point. It, surely the, the move would interest, interest Jack. The move would interest Jack, for sure. It probably wouldn't have to move that far. It's still in the north. It's Newcastle. They're a huge club, like Leeds United. You know, a huge club. That has to be said. Great fan base, like Leeds United. Very similar, um, I would say. But what Newcastle have now is they're going places. I'm not saying we're not, but you envisage that Newcastle will be in Europe in the next three seasons. Three seasons. Eddie Howe's done a fantastic job. They'll only get better. Um, Sven Botman's going to be great for them. They've just bought Nick Pope, Bruno Guimaraes. Um So I think New Jack would, the, the move would interest him. Of course it would. Um Steve said lots of money at Newcastle, but I honestly don't see them as a big step up from Leeds. Not currently. 
Um, not currently, but they are soon to be. Newcastle is a huge club as well, steeped in history, etc. They are. Let's not pretend that. Um, I think it would interest him. It's just it'll be interesting to see how it how it folds out. Um, Connor says England are pretty limited at left back playing. There could be a chance. Fair enough. Fair enough. It could. Um, he was great going forward, still caught out defensively. I think in the Premier League, maybe it'll be a bit of a tough task for him. Um, but it is going to be interesting. Um, yeah, great point by Sham. Great point by Sham that Jack is definitely worth more than Dan James. Yeah, you could argue that for sure. Definitely numbers-wise. I mean, what did Jack Harrison get in his first season, let alone the second? He's done two seasons. He's progressed. Um, let's have a look at his numbers last season and obviously we know he had a decent season last season so if we look he uh, 20 oh, no, where's last seasons why is that not on there 21 22 all oh, right okay yeah so sorry eight goals um to win the cup so he got 10 goals last season for Leeds United 10 goals last season for Leeds United uh previous season he got eight so he's getting better you know what I mean he's improving because if you have a look like his first season, uh, he got four goals uh, in the league, then six, then eight, and then another eight, but obviously two in the cup this time around. He's got better numbers than Dan James. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's definitely got better numbers than Dan James. Not even check the assists. But yeah, when you think about it like that, you know, we paid 25 million for Dan James. He's worth more than that. I think for me, 30 million and Leeds United would consider it. Lee Crisp, who do we get to replace him? Again, that's that's something that... that, that um, we would need to discuss. Would we need to replace him? I'm not, again, I'm not advocating that and I think we would, but let's just talk about that. You know, we brought in Sinistera. Jack plays, We, I envisage it'll look something like this, like Harrison from the right, uh, Sinistera from the left, Aronson, and then Bamford or, uh, or Joffe or whatever. Um, so, you could argue you could get by with look. You could get by with playing Rodrigo on the right, etc. You know, um, people say Gordon has more upside than Jack, and Newcastle were interested in Anthony Gordon, but Anthony Gordon signing a new deal at Everton, they put a bid in for him, and that was rejected. Toby says Harrison left Sinny right. No, I think Sinny plays from the left. You know, comes in. I think Harrison can do a job on the right on either wing. Um, I think if Leeds United get go for a left back and and Firpo is is fit or is managed to play a part, maybe he's not needed at left back. I'm just I think it's a worthwhile conversation to have to say. Look, of course, someone said we'd have to go out and replace him, and I think the club would. But if he did go and we got in a decent fee, would it like? Could, it, I don't know. Like this is why it's good to have this conversation. But I think. Could you have an 11 without Jack Harrison in it now? The answer would be yes. The answer would be yes. Because if you had, you know, Fairport left back, let's say if everyone's fit, um, you've then had a double pivot of Rocker and Adams or Rocker and Forshaw. You know, it's a, 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 a lamb and a ram, like a left attacking mid, right attacking mid. So you could have Rodrigo, Aronson, Sinistera, then... You know, Bamford, you've also got Rodrigo to throw in the mix. Click. I'm not saying, look, again, I'm not saying sell Jack. Let me just say that because people, people who don't watch the videos say on social media, as if you try to sell him, I'm not doing that. I don't want him to go. But I think at some point, we might receive a bid that the club say, yeah, I think we'll accept that. But Paul says as well, you know, selling Harrison and losing his goals is sab sabotaging the Premier League. And that's, again, that's something else, isn't it? That the club, that's what I'm saying. At what stage do we think as fans, the club receive an amount of money that they say it's worth the gamble or don't they? But every player has his price. But it's clear Newcastle are not being, you know, forced into playing crazy money because they're not, they're not even willing to pay 60 million for... Um, you know, Diaby and he's one of the hottest talents, you know, right out there, you know, and they're not willing to meet that them demands. They're not willing to do it. They say Jack's only worth 20 million. 
that's crazy talk. But at 30, 35, maybe 40, which I don't think they'll go up to, but let's say 30, 35, do the club accept that? Because they only paid 11 million for him. Do they look at the market and say, we can get a replacement in for him? If CDK comes in, for example, which is a big F, but if he did, he can play anywhere. You know, I agree with Gavin. I'd offer him a long-term contract. So I think there's further growing in Jack. Further growing in Jack, for sure. And I, I agree with you, Carlo. No, losing three of your best players. Because Jack now is like, he's a bit of the star in the side. If you look at the... If you look at the... Um, like all the uh, advertisements and that, it's all got Jack on. It's got Jack on, Robin Cock and Joffy. Do you know what I mean? Because we lost Raf and KP, they were on it previously. You know what I mean? You have them stars. You can argue he is the star now. I agree with we are leads. I think some fans under, underestimate how important he is, myself included. At times you do, because he just goes about his business. He's an hard worker. He's a grafter, you know? But I just think at some point the club might go, that's a decent bid. And then they'll do what we're doing now, right? I mean, I wouldn't sell him. I'd categor categorically not sell him. But then if they had bid 40 million, I probably would. Because it's a lot of money. And you only paid 11 for him. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting point. Betting man, Jack stays. Leeds won't sell. Even at 30 million, they might not. Uh, Callum Moendo, I think, will be a Leeds United player. I don't think CDK will move because I think it'll end up like the Rafinha situation. Um, I think he'll just get his move that he prefers and wants because the players win, and so they should. I think people say, oh, player power and that. In terms of getting managers, yeah, that's wrong, getting them sacked. But in terms of where they want to work, I think it's fine. Like, Can you imagine being told, I know some of us hate as jobs, some of us are lucky enough to love jobs that we're in, but can you imagine being told on a morning your alarm going off and saying, right, you're going shoveling shit for day? I say, no, no, you have to, because your previous employers sent you to this place and you've got to do it. We have a choice to say, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'd rather be on the door. But do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So we, if he chooses Milan, it is what it is. If he chooses Milan. But the big thing is with that is, will they put up the funds? They didn't with Sven Botman, and he's now at Newcastle. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I agree with you, Kian, you know, about Newcastle spending their money well and cheap. They're doing it well. I've been impressed with it. Um, and that's why they're not going for Jarby and looking at Jack Harrison, because Jack Harrison's more affordable than a Jarby. But what, at what point do they say no? You know, they've said 20 million. That's crazy. I think that's quite insulting for me personally. If they contacted me and I work for the club and they say, we want to buy Jack Harrison for 20 million, I'd say not a chance. Not a chance. Get on your bike. But if they said 30 million, I'd be saying, here, lads, the bid 30 million, we need to talk. That's what I mean. So we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. The poll, I did put a poll out. Um, and Leeds United fans or those that voted in the poll, I did ask who you felt uh, or how much you felt Leeds United would sell him for if indeed they were going to. And 34% said 30 million, 32% uh, 35, 40 plus was 25 and 7% said 20 million. That might have been Newcastle fan. Um, Oh, there we go. Check this out from Josh Arthur. He said, David Anderson has just tweeted that Cali bid of 20... 1.4 is likely to be accepted by PSG. Just personal terms to be agreed. Let's have a look on my notifications. There it is. From the mirror. Um, oh, we might be about to sign Cali Moendo, folks. That'll do the talk of, um, of, uh, of, of CDK done. And, and to be fair, when we started talking about CDK, we ended up talking about wrestlers, piss pots, dogs. Anyway, so... It don't, it don't matter, does it? But let me just show you that so you can get a view of that. Um, there you go. Uh, reports from Fla from France. I'm doing it again, man. I need to go have a lie down. Reports from France claim Leeds are prepared to offer 21.4 to PSG for striker Arnaud Calimowendo. 
PSG are prepared to accept their offer and Leeds will then attempt to agree terms with Cali Moendo. Cali Moendo done deal, perhaps, folks. And there's my good friend Ash who says, David. There you go. So it looks like that one could be a mover. Cali Moendo on his way to Leeds United. I'm excited. I'm excited about Cali Moendo. Of course, I prefer CDK. I think everyone at the club would prefer CDK. But Cali Moendo is a decent decent option. We just have a look at um, Cali Moendo uh, in terms of his numbers. Obviously, he's 20-year-old. He scored 21 goals and added six assists in 65 games for Lens. So, obviously, he's been RC Lens for the past two seasons as well. Um, Dave thinks he's rubbish. I don't think so. He's represented France under 16s, 17s and 18s. He's a regular now for the France under-21 side and has 12 caps under his belt. I think he's scored a number of goals as well for the under-21s. Uh, and everyone believes he'll ultimately progress to the full national side. Um, you know, that there are other offers in for the player as well. I know the clubs are interested in Milan being one of them. Um, but we'll we'll have to wait and see uh, how that how that goes. Keith? If you're saying stop waffling to me, I don't know why you're watching, brother. You've waited five minutes to put that comment in. Why? Like, have a good day. You know what I mean? Peace and love and that. But yeah, I'm going to say a prayer for you, brother. Because I want you to be happy. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not waffling. I'm telling you that what's being reported right now is that in France, they're saying that Leeds United are ready to pay the offer um, and PSG are prepared to accept it. We have a good relationship with PSG as well, of course. We know um, we know the um, connection that Rad Razani has with... Um, is it Al Khalifa or is that Man City? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, um, I think Leeds United look like they might get that done. Do you know what I mean? We definitely look like we might get that done for sure. For sure. Um, is people kicking off in the comments? Um, <laughs> uh, no, not a blue waffle, definitely not a blue waffle. Charlie says, We already have a really exciting young prospect striker in Joffy. I thought we'd go for someone more established, but if the club like him, then bring him in. Yeah, there's a big resale value option there as well. Uh, 20, 20 million's not too bad. Um, 21, whatever it is, if it's euros, it's less than that, right? I'm sick of having to, you know, convert that. It's doing me head and it's been a nightmare. Um, but yeah, Callum Owendo, um, a little bit more like a, um, like an Inketia. Do you know what I mean? That I'm not saying he's that style of striker, but he's more in line with that than say what CDK is, who can play anywhere. Um, you know, if we go on to um, Cali Mawendo on transfer marks and just look at some of the some of the play uh, positions he's played in, um, just one sec. Um, so he has played off the left as a left winger, uh, as a second striker or a centre forward. Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't think it stifles Joffy. Um, I think them two could probably play together. For me, I think Bamford's going to struggle throughout this season, genuinely. Um, I think he's going to struggle to to make 38 games. So there are going to be a lot of opportunities for Cali, for uh, Joffy, for sure. Imagine they, they strike up a partnership. You know, you've got, you've got Cali Moendo's 20-year-old, Joffy, who's a young lad as well. Them two could be, you know, the next Shearer and Sutton. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Though what I'm saying, they could forge it. You know, Kevin Phillips and uh, Niall Quinn. You never know. Like they've got the age on their side, it could light it up. I'm quite excited by the prospect of them. You know, big up to my main man Smudge as well. Who says, "Morning, Joe Smudge in the house." We cannot release Harrison. He is too val valuable. Yeah, I agree with you. I have agree. Uh, I agree with you uh, for sure. Um, Joffy and, and um, Cali could be could be deadly. Yeah, JK, JK. You know what I mean? J.K. That's a singer, right? I'm trying to think of his song. This is the return of the space cowboy. <laughs> Do you remember that tune? What a banger that was. J.K. Didn't go out with Denise Van Outen. Uh, this is the return of the space cowboy. 
Jamiroquai, JK. That's what we'll call them. Joffy and Cali, Jamiroquai. Do you know what I mean? JK. I'm just the cosmic girl. Yes, Dave Lowell. I love that tune as well. I'm actually going to go listen to that as we're done. But Joffy and Cali duo up front. I love it. Joff. Joff Ali. Joff Ali. Keith's back. He says, get 30 million for Harrison's and spend it all on a left back. Potentially. JK Connect. Like it. This is the return of the Space Cowboy. As long as it's not JK, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like CDK, again, though, they said that this bid had been accepted a couple of days ago as well, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, a man over in um, over in uh, Brussels has said Milan retained. Yeah, we know about Milan being confident about CDK. As for what's going to be next, for me, it's going to be the striker. It'll either be Cali and it, or, it, or it'll be CDK. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, we'll have to wait and see. And then, of course, I think we'll go after a left back. Potentially Charlie Taylor. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um, and then your experienced keeper. And that'll be Leeds United done. Unless, of course, big money comes in for Jack Harrison. Then Leeds United might reevaluate their options. I'll try to keep my finger on the pulse, my ear close to the ground and let you know as things happen. Um, what I will say, I'm really, really sorry about the early parts of the stream. It was a bit of a car crash, but sometimes it gets like that, right? Um, high serotonin levels today, in a good mood, all over the shop, been a busy morning, bit tired, all these things all rolled into one. Um, yeah. I'm all right, though, I promise you. I am. <laughs> Thank you for watching, though, right? Um, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to be live on Sunday. I'm going to be live on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be live on Sunday at 5 o'clock for 5 a.m., you know. 5 a.m. as Leeds take on Villa. So join me for that. And I'm going to be live at 8 o'clock. I'm live at 8 o'clock tonight with me, Corey and Matt. We're going to be doing a, another transfer stream on the Premier League. So not just Leeds United. Um, it's going to be Premier League focused. Uh, we're going to get to talk to Matt and, and find out what he thinks about Spurs and their great business. Man United have started to do business now as well. They've got Martinez in the door. Uh, Ericsson as well has decided to go for them over Brentford. Tough choice. Um, Chelsea have started to do bits obviously Raheem Sterling's been announced and Kula Bali as well so there's loads for us to discuss so if you want some more like transfer news um, join us later on 8 o'clock yeah uh, 8 o'clock um, thanks again listen I know I was a bit all over the shop I'm a bit up and down at the minute it is what it is thank you for always being there for me like genuinely because this is my happy place. This is where I come and can get a release. And it's nice to connect with you. It genuinely is. It's lovely to connect with you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. And hopefully I, I will see you um, tonight at eight o'clock. Okay. Peace and love. All right. I love you all. Yeah, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. on uh, on Sunday, Mohammed. Don't worry about it. I used to do a thing called the, the 5 a.m. club. I used to do it when I did the couch to 10k. And I used to get up early on the morning and go do running and that. Um, someone says, see you later, piss feet. I know. I need to go have a bath because <laughs> my toes are starting to go yellow. <laughs> my toes are starting to go yellow. Um, yeah, Lauren, thank you very much for that, Lauren. I know. I know. I know. Don't worry. I'm all right. Okay. Thank you, as always. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. Okay. Peace and love. Thank you. Oh, hang on. I, I actually missed the super chat there from my good friend Smudge. Let me just do that. He says, I'm tired of all these pundits, Joe. We're still putting us down on the business we have done this window. It's just ignorance. It's just ignorance, man. Um, it's just ignorance, bro. Don't let them get to you. That's what they want. They want the clicks. They want the clicks. That's why they do it. Because they know Leeds United are very, very vehement towards their football club. We take it personally. It's in the blood. All that sort of stuff, right? We know that, yeah? So I now try not to engage. It's difficult, but when I've seen the O'Hara stuff, I get tagged in it. I don't like to engage. 
because he's he's an idiot. He is, he's an idiot. But that's what he's done. Like, it's no surprise that him, Gabby Agbonlaho, um, Rory, etc., are employed by them because they do it. They do it. I do listen to talk sports. I do like it at times. But they, you know, it's funny when they're talking about Arsenal or whatever, because it's not us. But as soon as they start talking about you, you're like, what are you saying about Leeds, man? But that's what they're paid to do. That's what it's all about, right? It's about getting the clicks. Thank you, Dominic. Um, and that's what they do. And they know if they put something out on social media about Leeds United, that will bite. Will bite. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's true. But I do like like Simon Jordan. Me, he says it how it is. I like him, man. You know, I, I do like listening to some of the things. And he says some nice things about Leeds United as well, which is probably why we like him, right? <laughs> but I agree with you, Oil Mott. He is. He's a massive Cheb end. Join me tonight at 8 o'clock, yeah? Myself, Corey and Matt will be talking about all the latest deals in the Premier League. Thank you for being here for me and I hope you enjoyed today's stream and I will see you all later on, yeah, and then Sunday as well. But if anything happens on Saturday, I'll update you then as well. But um, yeah, looks like Callum Mwendo could be on his late way to, to Leeds United. But let's watch this space. I don't envisage it'll happen over the weekend anyway. Um, but I will see you in a bit. Peace out. I'm going to go listen to J JK now, Jamaica, Space Cowboys. A banger, that is. Thank you. <laughs>